Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time tuning in. We want to extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer with our upcoming election. We definitely need to be praying for the will of God to be done. We want to continue to pray for our president and our nation. We want to continue to pray for our local community, that God will open up doors of utterance. And we want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. Please keep Brother Jeremy Flanagan and his family in prayer. And then Brother Robert Schumann. Praise God. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our president and our nation. We pray that you will keep your hand upon this election, guiding it in such a way that we can continue to evangelize this world. Father, we also pray for our local community, that you will open up doors of utterance, and we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. I want to direct your attention to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, and we're going to start reading in verse number 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You know, this is an incredible scenario that's taking place here in what the Bible calls the latter times or the last days. I have a very strong feeling that we are in those last days. In this particular passage of scripture, there's one word that jumps out at me, and it's the word unthankful. And so I want to talk to us for a few minutes about a key to remaining thankful, a key to remaining thankful. You know, um, I wake up in the morning, praise God, and my feet hit the floor and I begin my day very, very early. Uh, I'm able to make myself a cup of coffee. I'm able to pray and read my Bible. I'm able to get into my truck, turn on the heat, um, I have halfway decent clothing that fits. Um, I'm able to come to my church office. I'm able to begin my day. I'm able to sit behind this camera. We're uh, able to have our good dear brother Jordan on the other side of that camera. The list goes on and on and on and on. I wanna to talk to us about the key to remaining thankful. You know, the nation of Israel they proved an incredible human dynamic. And that human dynamic is simply this, is that they forgot that God that brought them out miraculously out of Egyptian bondage and performed the incredible display of the miraculous, not just in the wilderness, but all of the curses and all the plagues and all the powerful uh, demonstration that God did in Egypt and then the demonstration in the wilderness. But when they got into the promised land, they gravitated towards idolatry. And this became their primary downfall. The sin of idolatry is at the nucleus of the sinfulness of the nation of Israel throughout the Old Testament and led them into Babylonian captivity, which I don't believe God ever intended them to do, but God used that. It's, it's considered to be theologically, it's called the exile. You have pre-exile, exile, post-exile, post and so on and so forth. But the nation of Israel, they forgot. And so I want to help us constantly stay thankful. And this is... This is the key to remaining thankful. Thank you, Jesus, that I opened my eyes today. 
Thank you, Jesus, that my feet hit the floor. Thank you, Jesus, that I was able to enjoy uh, the benefits of being blessed in my home. And I've got nice clothing to put on. And thank you, Jesus, for the truck. Thank you, Jesus, for the beautiful wife that I kissed before I walked out the door. Thank you, Jesus, for my children. Thank you, Jesus, for my grandchildren. Thank you, Jesus, for the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the Church of God, New Testament salvation. I think I've made my point. The problem that people have is they become acclimated to their lifestyle and they become acclimated to their blessings. And if they're not careful, they will forget. I'm scratching my head when I look at this particular passage of scripture because I'm thinking, how in the world does somebody become unthankful? They simply forget. Or another reason is they just don't have a reference point. They just don't appreciate anything because they never had a job. They never worked for anything. They never sacrificed for anything. The list goes on. But for me, the key of perpetual thankfulness is when I sit back and I start counting my blessings. I start counting them and I can name them one by one. There was a time in my life when I didn't own a vehicle. There was a time in my life when I didn't even have a place to live. There was a time in my life I could go on and on and on and on and on and so could you. But the point is that we take the time to sit back and start counting and naming our blessings. You know, um, even at the time of this pandemic, I've been had the opportunity to spend just a very brief time in several hospitals here in the area praying for uh, parishioners and praying for people. And you know, as you walk down the hallway of any given hospital and you just peer into the room, even briefly as you're walking down the corridor and you're just thinking in your mind, what is that person's situation? I wonder what they're dealing with. Is it, is it, um, is it cancer? Is it, is it uh, some other situation? Is it a disease? Is it some situation, is it life threatening? Are they gonna come out of here? The list goes on. But as I sit here this morning with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with blood applied to my life, with all of the godly and divine favor in my life, let it never be said of Rick Mayo that I was unthankful. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in everything, everybody say after me, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The Bible said to, we're to rejoice when we fall, fall into diverse temptations. We are to count it all joy, brethren. God is with us. God is in us. God is for us. Give thanks in everything. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.